Okay. Actually, before we came across this wolf, uh, I had a number of my fellow drivers and tour guides alert me to the fact that there was a wolf uh, in this area. And this is on the, the west side of Sable Pass, probably about eighth to a quarter mile uh, east of Giglioni Bridge. And when we came across this wolf, uh, it had caught and killed a ground squirrel. And, and that'll come in view in just, uh, just a moment or so. And so usually when you think of kills, you know, you think of wolves making kills of much larger animals such as moose, caribou, or doll sheep. And in that type of situation, uh, wolves are gorge feeders. And so they'll feed on the carcass uh, for a period of time. Then they're going to leave the carcass uh, for, up, for hours or so. They'll leave the carcass. They'll return to the den site, a rendezvous site. Uh, they'll regurgitate meat back to the pups. Uh, they'll rest, they'll digest, they'll also cache meat as well. And then they'll return to the carcass, uh, which may be hours later, um, but they will return. And, and so this adds a degree of predictability in, in what they're going to do. In fact, this is the, you know, there's four different ways to see wolves. One is strictly by chance. Second way, which is much rarer, uh, but adds that degree of predictability. That's wolves on kills. Uh, the third way is wolves on rendezvous sites. And then the fourth way and the rarest and the gold standard really for all wolf viewing <clears throat> is when wolves have located a den site close to the park road. And last time we had that was actually with Grant Creek uh, from 2004 to 2011 or so. And that actually provided the best and most consistent and predictable uh, wolf sightings uh, in my time here in Denali. And so uh, these, and these weren't wolves that were just, you know, two, three, four, five miles away. Uh, you could see them in the distance or you could see them right off the road on the tundra or you could see them go right by the bus as they're traveling on the road or beginning early July was when we had the opportunity to see wolf pups. And so that is truly the gold standard of wolf viewing. And so this particular wolf on the ground squirrel, well, again, it's kind of that miniature version of a wolf on a kill. And what it's doing is it hel it's helping to anchor this wolf here for this period of time. And then because wolf sightings are so infrequent, uh, this is my second of only three sightings this past year. And then the previous year I only had two sightings all season long. Um, because wolf sightings are so infrequent, and because this one is such a high-quality wolf sighting, the best one I had since 2018, definitely wanted to spend the time with this wolf. Uh, and also, and this was to allow my passengers to really get a good opportunity uh, to see this wolf, to take advantage of this opportunity, uh, to see and photograph, um, uh, see and photograph, uh, because... The wolf sightings now, because they're so rare, it's very seldom that visitors have this kind of opportunity. I mean, this is the best wolf sighting I've had since 2018. And so it's just not something that happens often at all to where, you know, people have, well, this kind of opportunity now. Um, and the wolves have to develop behaviors to enable visitor viewing, meaning they have to develop travel or hunting behaviors along or near the park road, uh, or what's far more rare, uh, the, you know, the, the establishment of kills near or park the, near the park road, which is visible from the road and not obscured by brush or trees, that type of thing. Um, or the establishment of rendezvous sites, which is uh, far rarer still, and then what is most rare, the establishment of those den sites uh, close to the park road. So if they don't develop those behaviors, if they're mostly spending time in the backcountry, which is what we've been seeing for the number of years, then you're going to have reduced sightings, and that's exactly what we've been having in Denali. Now this particular year, uh, it seemed like the vast majority of sightings, not just myself, but from other drivers and tour guides were happening towards the last five, six weeks of the season. Uh, previous to that, there had been a gray wolf, very possibly this one, that had been sporadically seen on the west side of Sable. Um, but, you know, overall, if I had to kind of grade this year, at least certainly for myself, I would say other than this particular side in here, you know, is a very poor year for wolf viewing. You know, again, only three sightings all season long, and that's traveling into the park five, 
uh, sometimes six days out of the week. Uh, and then the other thing that wolves do uh, is that they cash meat uh, from from certainly from larger kills and, and uh, also from you know, you know such as this ground squirrel. And again, wolves have evolved in becoming gorge feeders. You know they have to eat as much as they can at a time on these larger kills because larger kills tend to attract grizzly bears. And usually between wolf and grizzly bear interaction, usually the grizzly bears win out. And so wolves attempt to eat as much as they can. Uh, they will also cache meat from that kill. They'll take pieces of meat away to the den site or um, the rendezvous site uh, to give to the pups and also regurgitate meat back to the pups. And so caching meat is, uh, you know, it's a routine part of a wolf's behavior, which is exactly what this wolf is doing with this ground squirrel. And so it's caching this ground squirrel and it will return at a later time uh, to feed on it. And there, there's no time frame for wolves or bears for that matter to consume a carcass. And so you know, whether it happens quickly or whether it happens over an extended period of time, uh, time is completely irrelevant and meaningless to wildlife. And probably the most extreme example I can give of this actually occurred this past April uh, in Yellowstone, where I photographed and videoed a grizzly feeding on a five-month-old bison carcass. And so... Both wolves and grizzlies can feed on carrion, and that's that's rotten meat. Uh, that is not an issue to them in any way, shape, or form. And so, uh, again, there's no time frame to consume a carcass. Now, I mentioned rendezvous sites earlier, and what those are is that when pups actually leave the den, uh, they're actually too small to be able to keep up with the adults at that time. And so the pups are left at what's called rendezvous sites. Uh, think of these as temporary gathering sites where the pups are left while the, the adults uh, go hunting. And then uh, in a lot of cases, if there's an, you know, one and two year old wolves uh, within the family group, a lot of times they'll designate a babysitter to stick with those pups. And usually that tends to be a one year old. Uh, otherwise, if there's only the two adults, then the pups will be left on their own. And that's what happened uh, in 2018 with Riley Creek West. Uh, uh, those pups were left on their own. And actually, one, out of one of those pups, one of them was quite the little adventurer and would go wandering, including on the park road, uh, by itself. And it was pretty common during that time to see uh, that young pup. Now, it, they will continue to use these rendezvous sites going from one to another to another to another up until at least late September into early November. And then by that time, the pups are old enough and large enough uh, to be able to keep up with the adults as uh, the family uh, travels together uh, during the late fall and winter. And so that's really what rendezvous sites are. And again, it's very seldom that we have them located near the park road. Uh, but when that does happen, like in 2018, it adds that degree of predictability in improving dramatically the opportunities for visitors to see wolves. And so, you know, whether wolves are on kills or rendezvous sites or den sites, yeah, that dramatically improves the chances for seeing them and, and having higher quality sightings too. Now this is what I'd refer to as a by chance encounter, uh, meaning that there's absolutely no predictability involved with this type of, uh, uh, of encounter. And this, by the way, was on the west side of Sable Pass. And so, uh, you know, on, upon arrival, it's completely unknown as to how long the wolf would be visible. And in this case, it was maybe visible for about a, a minute or so. Uh, and also prior to 2000, we very seldom saw black wolves. And so, um, yeah, and then this was the only black wolf of the season that uh, that I saw.